In this video, we're going to explain the stages in the consumer buying decision process. So what is the consumer buying decision process? It is a five-step process used by consumer when buying goods or services. So unconsciously, in terms of all of us, when we make a purchase, we will go through in terms of these five steps with regards to the consumer buying decision, starting from need recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase decision, and the post-purchase behavior. So we will run through them in the following slides, starting with the need recognition. So in the case of need recognition, the consumer recognizes that they have an unfulfilled need as a result of an imbalance between actual and desired state. So you are hungry and you desire to have a complete meal to feel full. So in the case of recognition of needs itself, it can be triggered by internal stimuli such as physical needs of hunger and thirst or external stimuli such as packaging or advertisement. So I think the last time perhaps maybe you were at the bus stop, you saw a bus ad, that bus ad itself would have influence in terms of the way you make a purchase. Following which you have what we know as information search. This information search, the aim of it is to satisfy the recognized need. The information search can be internal, stored in your memory, or in terms of external search from the outside environment. So the case of internal search itself, we're looking at products usually that you purchase on a frequent basis. Uh, on that itself, perhaps maybe a snack, a meal, and on that itself, you will actually use a past experience in terms of internal information. Combat that in terms of buying the laptop, especially your first time, this will look at in terms of external information search. You look at in terms of perhaps the product attributes, you ask your friends, you search online, and on this itself is part of looking at external information search. So when do you use external information search? You use it especially in the cases where there's a high risk, where in terms of your little knowledge of the product, little experience with the product, and in terms of a lack of confidence in the purchase itself. This is where you start seeking for information, be it through friends, family, or in online for more information. After in terms of information search, you have what we know as the evaluation alternatives. Whereby with the information itself, you actually produce what we know as the evoke set, which are the consumer's preferred alternatives. So think in terms of getting to the laptop, the last time perhaps you want to purchase a laptop, a couple of brands will come to mind. Perhaps maybe HP, Dell, Apple. These are what you call as part of your evoke set for a laptop itself. And from this, this itself in terms of the evoke set, the consumer yourself will actually further evaluate to make a choice. So how do we make a choice on the evoke set? We will usually analyze the product attributes. So we look at in terms of in the case of a laptop, the memory space, the RAM, we look at in terms of the size of the laptop, the weight of the laptop. We rank them by attributes by importance. So if you're using for it for gaming, perhaps maybe the graphics cards is important to you and you rank it higher. In the case of cut-off criteria itself, most of the time we will actually look at price. So it's beyond your budget itself, this may be a cut-off criteria in terms of how you make the purchase. Following in terms of making a choice, you have then make a purchase decision. So after you evaluate the alternatives, the consumer makes a decision on the purchase. Making a decision itself on the purchase, there's a very many in terms of options. Things like in terms of whether to buy a yes or no, when to buy it, what to buy in terms of the brand, where to buy it? Is it in-store? Is it online? How do we pay be it in terms of cash, credit card, or in these days we have in terms of other forms of mobile payments like Grab. So on this itself, the purchase decision is something that the business needs to take care of because this is the point whereby the consumer finally decides and want to make a payment for it. Next up, we have what we know as the post-purchase behavior. This post-purchase behavior comes after making the purchase and on this itself, consumer expect certain outcomes from the purchase. Recall from our earlier video, we talk about in terms of expectation and the perceived value. So the larger the gap between in terms of the expectation and the performance, this will result in terms of greater the consumer dissatisfaction. So if you recall in terms of a purchase in the past whereby you were dissatisfied, most probably was that you had an expectation and the product itself under deliver as such you were dissatisfied. And in the case of post-purchase behavior, we have what we know as the cognitive dissonance, also known as a bias regret. So this comes about when you make a purchase and you regret the purchase that you made. This is uh, quite crucial for companies because if you are having a bias regret, you will lead to dissatisfaction and this dissatisfaction will actually cause in terms of no repeat purchase and even possible negative word of mouth. So on that itself, the post-purchase in terms of customer satisfaction is important and how companies try to reduce the cognitive dissonance in customers is through in terms of guarantees, warranties, uh, follow-up calls with the customer to ensure that they do not have in terms of the buyer's regret and to overcome it. 
So on that itself, we summarize in terms of the stages in the consumer buying decision process, the five steps from need recognition all the way to post-purchase behavior. I see you in the next video.